Hello and welcome to Treasure Vessels, our podcast where we want to discuss your songs in the light of the living word of God. Hey, good morning, everybody. It is early here in the United States, 5.36 a.m. to be exact right now. Well, you know, I don't know how exact that is, but it's pretty close. And um, we have got a little earlier than usual schedule today because we're going across the world to Australia, down under. But uh, first, let me say good morning, Manasse in India. How are you? Hey, hi, Carolyn. Uh, it's good afternoon here. Maybe it's not usual, and for the first time, uh, we are meeting at my 3 p.m. here, and uh, it's it's. Uh, I just got a little, um, let very little storm here, so I was getting worried. Like you know, if during the interview, I'll be like getting all the blows on my face. <laughs> so it 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 looks fine outside. So it's it's pleasant. So I'm thankful. So yeah, um, we are here in Australia today uh, with Eric. So we'd like to welcome Eric here in Treasure Vessels. Thanks very much. It's actually 8.30 at night on a Saturday night in Australia. And here I am stuck at home doing nothing. Well, apart from talking to you guys. Awesome. Okay. You know what? I thought it was 9 o'clock there, 9.30 now. It's 8.30? 837. I could have slept an hour longer. I thought it was nine there for you. Okay, whatever. I'm awake now. <laughs> is that a is that a dog I hear? Yeah, that's for Jack, now? right? I met him. I Jack, met him. Yeah. 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 yeah, my dog my dog is so smart, she knew that it was too early to be awake. She didn't even get up out of her bed. You know? uh, uh, Jack, come here. Come here. I'll introduce you to him. Jack? Okay. Come here. Come on. So cute. I I, I loved it. <laughs> it's Aww. so cute. That's Jack. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Jack. No barking. No barking. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Would he bark at us? No, nah, nah, he just barks. Whenever I go into the studio and I'm about to re reduce a track and mix it down, he starts barking, so... <laughs> It's like, I got to make you remember that I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Eric, we're so glad that you came to join us today. Gosh, it's nice to see you. Yeah. And you the, guys too. Mm -hmm. The man behind the mini sounds. The mini, mini sounds. And both well, Manasse I and I have worked on songs, on some songs with you. Which has been with, great. And, uh. I practically live in this room, so that's why I keep putting out so much sound because this is where I live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you also, you're also a big famous chef there, aren't you? Not so much anymore, no. Yeah, but I didn't know about like, you know, um, I came to know about that just looking at your Google uh, Plus profile. It says chef there. And I was like, yeah. oh, uh, you know, I've not, uh, I, I just thought you've been cooking sounds <laughs> and <laughs> since when you got into foods uh, and all <laughs> i wish i was put it that way yeah <laughs> so eric um let's listen to a little clip of your music and then we'll uh talk a little bit more okay no worries
That was really, really nice. Very Thank nice. You. That's a piece that you have called Human. Very nice. So, Eric, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your music background? Um, well, it's a long one, but there's a big space in the middle where nothing really ever happened. Okay. Um, started playing in bands about 19, 1980, uh, post-punk it was. I used to play bass. Uh, then I filmed what was uh, probably the first totally electronic band in New Zealand back in 1982, a band called Bellare. Um, had quite a bit of success, and one of the songs is still being played on radio in New Zealand. Uh, what song is that? A song called Dancing. It's on my YouTube thing. I just put some pictures up to it. But uh, okay. it was all electronic for way back then, and uh, there was no MIDI or no... Um, um, computerized technology or anything. It was virtually played live between myself and a friend of mine called John. We used to play all the bass lines and everything live. <laughs> uh, we didn't even nice. have a sequencer. Um, but that's that's uh, become a bit of a cult song in New Zealand and it's still been played on radio over there now. And anyway, uh, played in a few bands and then I migrated to Australia in 1986. And... Um, Met with some success here. I used to program Feel Like Computers, and also we were signed, offered a contract with Factory in uh, England, a label that signed New Order and bands like that. But it all fell through, and it was such a disappointment that I gave music away totally mm-hmm. uh, and never played again till about three years ago when I finally had enough uh, bit of spare money and a bit of um, my children had grown up and all that sort of thing and had a bit of spare time. So I thought I'd try and start making music again, and here I am. Wow. That's really something. It was only three years ago you started putting tunes up on SoundCloud? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, about two and a half, three years ago, yeah. That's, it's got to be, it's got to be a little longer than that, because I've been on there a couple years, and you already had, I don't know how many thousands of followers by the time that I had run across you. Uh, I think I just fell into a great community. Uh, let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and they're the main people that uh, I seek my um, advice from. Um, I've um, caught up with a lot of people from my old days in New Zealand. They're there as well. I've worked with some of them, Western, Western and uh, another guy called Roddy, who um, did a remix on the album I've got coming out now. And they used to play in bands with me way back when. Mm-hmm. Uh, just just a good community that I landed with. So from there, um, like the collecting pool and all those people, we just basically flowed on from there and and got those followings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that it is pretty neat that the way that um, mm. the Internet has brought us all together and uh, people from your past, well, I haven't, I haven't had the good fortune to run into any people from my past, music past yet on SoundCloud, but um, you're a lot more famous. <laughs> it was, it was, it's a great thing about it. It's been really exciting mm-hmm. actually catching up with a lot of people from the past. Yeah. To see that they're still playing and producing tunes as well. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, well, Eric, so um, you're one of the brave souls to come on and talk to us on our program. You know that we use the Bible to um, talk about your topic. Yep. And um, the topic that you chose for us to discuss is tolerance and just getting along despite our fears and feelings and harmony. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, you know, the three of us probably have some different ways of looking at this uh topic. I don't know if you want to start off or if you would like for one of us to start. Um, well, to me, it's just about um, accepting accepting people for who they are, whatever their beliefs are or whatever their um, religions or aspirations or dreams are. Um, not everybody has a dream. Not everybody has an aspiration. Um, but, you know, um, I think it's more just that, just being able to sit down whatever the race, whatever the religion, whatever the creed, whatever the beliefs, and uh, have a barbecue and a drink and 
laugh and talk about life in general and those sorts of things. That's sort of, I wish the whole world could be like that. I know it never will be. Mm. Um, I know it's a very difficult thing for a, a lot of people to accept, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to anybody if they talk to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, so, so will I. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, on an individual basis that um, most of us do try, you know, to get along and uh, that there are just enough people in this world that, um, you know, have prejudice or, or jealousy or whatever type of problems that they have. Um, well, I, I think it's one of the great things about Australia. I know it's been criticised in the past when we've had issues with um, uh, the boat people at the moment and things like that. But at the end of the day, on um, on my street, I, I live next door to a Hungarian, a Lebanese, across the road from a Sri Lankan and uh, Australian, and uh, we have absolutely no problems communicating as a community. And those are the sorts of things I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, we, all, we all built our houses at the same time. We borrowed each other's wheelbarrows and all those mm -hmm. sorts of things. And uh, we've had barbecues and laughed, and never, never a question in my mind that 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 this is normal, as far uh -huh. as I'm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. I um, I think all of us do. You know, at least all of us here do uh, get along. And there's so much. There's a great community. You know, on the internet, on SoundCloud, and other music sites where people get along. But um. So, but I had the first uh, scripture that came to my mind. If you don't mind, I'd like to read it. It'll take me just a minute here. It is from the beginning, from uh, Genesis chapter 4. And um, it says, Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the course of time, Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel, his brother, brought the firstlings of his flock and all of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard to Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering, he didn't regard it. And so Cain's countenance fell. And the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at your door. It is, its desire is for you, but you must master it. And then Cain said to Abel, his brother, let's go out to the field. And Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. And the Lord said to Cain, where's Abel, your brother? And he said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And so basically, you know, from the very beginning, God created us to love him and to love one another and the first brothers that we read about in the Bible um, one of them kills the other one and uh, Manasseh and I were talking about it it was it was jealousy you know he he did not accept that um, God did not accept his offering and there's a whole other uh, discussion in here about why God was not pleased with um, Cain's offering. Um, and just kind of to highlight that a little bit, it was Cain gave of the fruit of the ground. He It did not say that he gave his best or his first, you know. and But it does say that Abel gave of the first of his flocks and... and um, so there's a, there's some discussion about it in the Bible, and so basically it started off in jealousy, and um, we've been fighting and jealous of each other ever since. Yeah, um, just to add there, like um, that was not the like as as per my thinking, that was not the only uh, beginning of jealousy. Jealousy was. Um, first found in satan you know lucifer he was jealous mm -hmm. of god we can yeah. you know say that like he was jealous like if he can why can't i be in that position and that's why he just you know thought of that and uh, that uh, that like evil or you know that uh, negativeness 
to birth from there. So it is something like when you say like, you know, I'm good, I'm the best, you know, why that person deserves the best, you know, or that position. I, I know everything that it is good. So, yeah, that's how, the, like, you know, Cain was also feeling like, you know, I do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, like um, uh, hard work on, you know, um, like doing the uh, uh, farming or all the agriculture stuff which takes a lot of patience and all. And my younger brother, he just, you know, uh, just walks with the flocks and do, does nothing. He just roams around. So there's a big difference between both professions. So that's how it got developed in him. That's, that's how I see it. So, so Eric, what do you think about that? Um, I know that you see it probably even in your own work around you in the world. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And it's it's just one of those things that that I abhor. I mean, I, I'm um, I'm I'm probably too generous. I've probably given away too much of, of of things that I shouldn't have. Maybe who knows? But I would rather um, uh, share everything I have with with people than keep it locked up and and things like that. So I, I kind of find. Um, jealousy and things like that to, to just to great me i mean you know you get out of life what you put into it i believe most times um some of us have a lot of bad luck and some of us have a lot of good luck at the moment i'm I, i'm um, enjoying my life but you know there was about 10 years of hard times there where things weren't working out and, and we all have our issues but that's not to to mean that i should take it out on anyone else who's having a better run of things than me uh, all, all, all the better, you know. I mean, um, it's just just the way I feel about things, you know. Yeah, uh, just to add on that, Eric, like you said a wonderful thing, like, you know, uh, and that's how we are supposed to be, as you said, like, you know, being generous. That's like, if you look into the Bible, that's what uh, yeah. Jesus talked about, like being humble and giving. Every time give, give, give with love. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. like, uh, when you said, um, like, uh, jealousy and these things, like, you know, uh, like, uh, unlucky or lucky, I, I, I just want to say what I think about that. It's not about being lucky or unlucky. It's about where your focus is. For example, I'm in India, and if I'll be cribbing about everything, okay, I don't have a good net, but, you know, Jonathan and uh, Caroline has a better net overseas. Like, you know, I wish I was there, but I'm not putting my focus in here where I have. I mean, I should be... Uh, working on what I have already. If I'll put my focus on here, it can get more better because, you know, uh, everyone got the same portion with same life and same happiness. But if I'll be looking at others, I can never uh, uh, feel like I'm also blessed and lucky. It, I mean, it's just an example. So... And and you know I mean it's it's evident everywhere even on even on even on the SoundCloud uh, um, site and things like that but also amongst musicians yeah uh, I mean I I, I I guess this sort of portrays how I feel about it I, I like all kinds of music and every kind of music if it's played well and the person can play play really well or sing really well nothing is uh, more emotional to me than 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 that. It doesn't matter whether it's jazz or blues or rock or, or punk or electronic, uh, even a bit of, um, you know, um, bass dub and stuff. It's, it's all good, you know. It's what, if it's done well, it's it's it's. There's no reason to start slagging any other kind of music because it's all doing the same thing. It's all uh, touching your emotions and giving you feelings, and. Um, I guess that's what's important to me. That's nice. That's really nice, you guys. Yeah, I. it seems, you know, like while you were both talking, I was thinking, you know, if you could just, even thinking about you being happy and content playing your music, um, you're not sitting there thinking about being jealous of, you know, oh, this person has got more plays than me, you know, or too many people like you, you know, I, I have seen, um, some people 
make some some strange comments you know why are you following this person and you're not following me I mean there's so much uh, going on in the world where we're comparing ourselves to other people we're trying to be um, accepted um, trying to force acceptance on ourselves and you know I mean we're human we have imperfect traits and um, but you that know God, just like what that sounds like a song I write. That sounds just like a song I write. Human, what? and that's exactly what that song was about. You know, it's yeah. about you make mistakes, you do stupid things. Mm-hmm. I've got two teenage daughters. Um, that song is dedicated to them. Uh-huh. They're only human. You know, uh, it's just the the way we are. Yeah, yeah. Last night um, we helped my uh, stepdaughter move, and um, three three guys were helping and one of them was a lot younger and then the other one is probably in his late 20s um and then the older one was fine he he was just hopping to it and he was working hard and but the two younger ones they were complaining a lot they did things you know like they pulled this piece of furniture across this wood floor and i mean they made a scratch that was like 10 feet long i mean it was a big scratch and my husband is like, what were they thinking? You know, those, you know, and I said, Hey, you live and you learn. That's how you learn by, you know, making mistakes like that. They're human. You know, it's, that's how we learn, you know? And the good thing is, is that God is really patient with us. He, he lets us, if we have to go through the same experience more than once so that we can uh, learn and do right the next time. So, but, um, Let's uh, let's listen to a, a clip of your feature song that you've called One World. That was really good, Eric. Yeah. I like the beat on that. Now, now I get from where you get the bass ideas because I never, uh, I didn't knew that uh, you were a bass player earlier because your bass sense is awesome. Yeah, well, I used to play bass, not not as good as that, but yeah, I used to play it uh, way way back in the um, Joy Division cover days and things like that. So. Um, yeah, I guess I sort of had a feel for for how to play it electronically without getting too uh, fuck fake, I suppose. Mm, well, that's really good. That that's the kind of music I like to sing to too. Yeah, you already know that. 
Okay, hey, so let's uh, go continue on with our um, conversation a little bit there. <clears throat> I just want, you know, so we pretty much have covered that. We see that uh, we have the capacity to be jealous or to hate people. Um, you know, there's a lot of scriptures we could pull out of the Old Testament about um, there being uh, tensions between the races and hatred that goes all the way back. Um, and we will on your, on, on the blog page where we'll feature you, we'll have a lot of scriptures written there that I'd like to mention, but I'll hold back on right now. I wanted to say that, like, even if you go back to like the story of Jonah and the well, that, um, the people of Nineveh were very evil and they, they attacked the people of Israel all the time. And um, so when God told Jonah, go to Israel, uh, go to Nineveh and, and tell the people to repent, Jonah didn't want to go because he's like, I know you'll just forgive them if they repent. You know, and Jonah was like, I want you to blow them up real good. But but uh, and so he said, no, I'm that's why Jonah took off and he went on a boat. He said, I'm, I'm not going to go there. And then, you know, of course, he ended up getting tossed overboard and swallowed by a well. And he said, okay, God, you know, in the belly of the well, he cried out to God and God heard him. And he said, okay, I'll go to Nineveh. And then he walked around in this big city, you know, telling everybody to repent. And they're like, who's this little crazy Jewish guy walking around our cities? You know, all of the streets, it took him, I don't know how many days. And they took him seriously and they repented. And then God, you know, didn't destroy him and so it's just like through stories like that God has been telling people from the beginning I want you to love one another I want you to get along I want you to forgive each other and um, stories of God's love are lost a lot um, when people talk about the Bible and the Old Testament and uh it, but it, it's it's true. God really does want us to love one another and get along. Yeah, that's a good example of what's going on around, like, you know, just uh, on a day-to-day -day life, you'll experience similar things. Like, you know, uh, if something is wrong from a person, I mean, if someone did wrong to me, uh, you know, uh, I'll be thinking, okay, like, I should get back to him or... You know, like, um, uh, he didn't uh, do it good, uh, you know, he should say sorry or whatever. I mean, instead of focusing on those kind of thoughts, I can think of like, okay, let's uh, forgive him because um, yeah, he might learn or, or he'll not do that again. So this kind of attitude is missing in present time. And um, I, I just want to quote one scripture uh, related to that, which is, uh, which says, like, everyone will live quietly in their own homes in peace and prosperity, for there will be nothing to fear. The Lord Almighty has promised this. Even though the nations around us worship idols, we will follow the Lord our God forever and ever. So instead of focusing on this kind of an attitude, uh, even uh, everyone, doesn't matter, it's uh, like Christian, even those who know these scriptures behave like that. So, you know, like, it uh, doesn't matter how bad is happening around you. Instead of focusing on that, you should be focusing on what the Lord has given us, the love we can share. As you were just saying, uh, Eric, like, you know, uh, uh, down the street you live in, there are a lot of different people from different parts of the world. But still, the way you gel up with each other, you know, like, how, uh, like, uh, let it be hangouts or whatever. But that kind of uh, nature should spread throughout the world. I mean, I know uh, the way it's going, it doesn't look like it will happen one day. And that's why we see the second coming is the true thing which is coming out of uh, out, out from the Bible. That why there's a need of second coming, why there is a need of a second home which God is creating for us. Because this has been corrupted already and God w uh, wants to end all the evil here. Well, well, I think at the moment like, the world is, is, is uh, a lot closer than it used to be even 15 years ago. Uh, and, and in my own life, um, you know, my wife, wife was Christian, is a Greek, Greek Orthodox. Um, okay. And I'm a Christian. And um, the Greek Orthodox Church wouldn't accept me and marry us. So we went to the Uniting Church instead. 
but um, across the road, uh, uh, there's a heavily, heavily uh, Muslim family, and my daughters babysit their daughters. So, you know, this this is just to me, it's just common sense, um, and and the fact that you know there's there, there's the, the such an international community now. The tolerance needs to be more, and the jealousy needs to be less, and we need to really get along, because you know, even going easy music-wise, when I used to submit uh, songs to record companies, I used to do it on a cassette tape. It's a little little thing that used to have two little wheels in it, and we used to post it away, and it would be months before I got an answer back from a label or something like that. Now it's instant, so we we need to uh, basically just get along because. Everything is instant, and with the internet, you know, if you say something bad about someone, it's out there, it's on the record. So it's a mistake to do such things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even if it's not on this record, we know there is a, uh, you know, highest record keeper who will open the book of records someday, and, you know, that will be the baddest record. I mean, I will not care about my neighbor recording something out of my bad thing. But I'll uh, yeah. I'll be concerned about if God is keeping these records. Yeah. Great, you guys. I really enjoyed listening to all that. You both have a lot of insight and uh, thought going on, and um, you know, uh, you talking about um, all the different people that live around you, including um, uh, people of different religions and. You know, that's that's one thing, one of the other scriptures that had um, gone through my mind. I don't have that quote exactly um, written down, but Jesus said that, at, at you know, we, we always hear about all of his um, talks about, about love and patience and tolerance and stuff. But then at one point he did say, I did not come to bring peace, but, there, but division between, you know, um, a father and a mother and a child and the parents and a husband and a wife, you know, and brother and sister, and neighbor. Um, but what he, what that scripture means is that if you really love God, that you will follow God and you will love God more than everybody else. And also what it means is that the world hates Jesus. Um, the world, meaning like uh, the material world, the non-spiritual world, the people who don't understand, and um, the, if you will, the evil spirit, Satan, whoever you know, that comes after uh, rejecting the Lord. If you are a follower of Christ, um, the world hates you. And so there's a separation there. You love God and the world hates you. And so he was saying, this is what's going to happen. And that, and, and truly that, that has happened. And to me, when I look at it, it's very kind of um, curious thing because I just see that um, Jesus is good. And the bad rap that he has is mostly from Christians who have you know, put out a bad reputation and um, he himself is good. And so, I, you know, I don't completely understand it, but I see that it is true and there are a lot of uh, problems in people being um, overly zealous for their, their religion um, whereas Jesus said, we're, we're supposed to love each other and um, realize that we are human. I give you a small example on the same context, like when you talk about like religion and all. I mean, uh, my view is always like that, like Jesus didn't came here to set a religion. He just came here to, uh, you know, spread love. But uh, I tell you how uh, Christians, Indian Christians behave. Like, uh, you know, if uh, like a preacher who is a born Christian and uh, belongs to a good uh, Christian family, He's been preaching a lot, and just a few months ago, a Hindu or a different religious guy converted or accepted Christ, and he's doing a bigger ministry than this guy, then this guy will be jealous, oh, he was a Hindu, how can he preach such thing and all? Like, 
this should not be there. He should be happy. You know, like uh, he, like, like whosoever is coming in the family, in the Christ, you know, he is, you know, or they are spreading the word, like you know, they are more focused on, uh, you know, spreading the word of God. But instead of that, here people behave like, you know, okay, uh, they don't deserve to be, uh, you know, uh, carrying the word or and all. Uh, who are they to decide? I mean, Jesus has accepted everyone. Jesus has tolerated our sins. God has tolerated our sins from ages. You know, so we humans are not supposed to think in that direction. Yep. Yep. Well, I've got another. I've got another thing to say too, Eric. Since you're talking so much right now, if you're ready, you know, I'm I just, ready. I just want to say that you know there is a lot of controversy going on in the world about you know not just religious differences and racial differences, but um, also choices um, that people make, and. Um, the other day, I um, I had a thought, and I was like, you know, some of the things that are going on in the world, I don't have the answer for, um, and I can see both sides of the arguments. And so, as I was praying about it, I uh, the scripture um, where Jesus was um, being tested by some Pharisees. They were trying to see what he would say. And and they said, um, they were asking Jesus about divorce. And um, Jesus said, you know, out of the hardness of your hearts, Moses gave you all a divorce. It's not what God wanted. God wanted um, a man and woman to be together, joined as one in marriage, and then you become one. And he doesn't want us any divorce to be separated, you know, but we know that their divorce is rampant all over the world, even in Christian families. Um, it's, but the thing that got me out of that scripture was that Jesus said, out of the hardness of your heart, you know, basically God allowed it. Because that's the same thing with any of us, with anything that we do. We're just like, hey, God, you know, I want to do this. You know, I want to do this thing which you've said is bad or wrong. It can be anything. And um, God says, okay, you know, I'm not going to force you. If that's what you want to do, do it. It's going to be bad for you. Um, you may not like the consequences or outcome, but he's not forcing us to follow the rules. He's... He's really letting us um, figure things out on our own, as we've pretty much asked him to do. But the guidance is there. The 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 the, the there's there's help in in the words, if you know what I mean. Like there's the, um, I think it's 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 important to understand the philosophy of all of this because there's so much good in it, if you know what I mean. Um, and I think that's missing in a lot of people's education these days as to um, respect, tolerance and, and understanding and stuff like that. It's, uh, um, you know, it's a very much a me generation right now and um, mm -hmm. there's a, a lot of um, the spiritual things are lost in, in the youth of today, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. and, that, and that's a generalisation, but mm -hmm. it's, um, it's evident a lot more than when I was a youth, put it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you because I see this generation more close because, you know, I live among them and I, I mean, I notice more closely and I have to agree that it's more about like, you know, uh, self-centered thing, more concerned about uh, the... What's in it for me? Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, I don't know if there's a whole lot we can uh, do about it uh, because even this kind of thing is uh, talked about, prophesied in the Bible that, of course, you know, not everybody agrees with the, the words, but it says in the end times that men will be pleasers of themselves, you know, seeking to please themselves and promote themselves. 
and and so really if we want to um, help to spread love and acceptance of, of one another um, we need to stop focusing on me 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 all the time and uh, you know reach outside of ourselves and realize that everybody that we're looking at is human we all make mistakes we do live in one world which is about to overflow see how all that worked out those are all the titles of Eric's tunes <laughs> and <There> you guys <laughs> and I mean we should just accept each other because we are all full of sin and 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 flaws and mistakes but we're all made to love and and, and what's love and I mean, have, having said what, uh, what I just said, although, if, you know, if you look back, we've come a long way in the past hundred years. Mm -hmm. um, man has become a lot more equal in, in a lot more things. Um, and and uh, you know, so at the same time, there's progress and there's not so much progress. Um, but, yeah, we just have to keep trying. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, uh we, if we, if we end up in the last uh, part of the Bible, it says, you know, that we're going to have a new heaven and a new earth. And um, when we're finally there, there will be true peace. But until then, we should still try to have peace now, even though it says that there will always be wars and rumors of wars. So, um, but still, blessed are those who are the peacemakers. And so let's be the peacemakers. And let's listen to your last clip here called Overflow. just realized I was not on my own track then. <laughs> that was what? I just realized I was not into my own track. Oh, okay, okay, that's all right. It was some great nodding music. And if anybody wants to listen to those awesome sounds, they can get you at soundcloud.com forward slash the association, that's T-H-E, and then dash. A S S O C I A T I O N. And um, yeah, you have a big range of sounds to some nice, really ambient stuff, quiet stuff, some strange stuff, a few, some dark stuff, and then some nice stuff with the great beats and kick and bass. And uh, it's all good. It's all very, very good. Well, basically, so, I mean, basically, uh, my music is directed by the sound. 
uh, it depends uh, when I come in, what kind of mood I'm in and what sound comes out. And then, you know, from there, it's, it's not um, – I'm not very good at being genre-based. I just play what I feel. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, so what was the uh, the inspiration for the name of that tune, Overflow? Um, I guess it was kind of um, – the original track had uh, – I had a uh, – an Indian lady singing on it from the original one from a couple of years ago. And um, it was quite a momentous thing. And I guess what happens with momentum is is is, is in the, the visual I played with, it was uh, like an overflow. Uh, just kept pushing up and up and up and up and up and, and getting faster and faster and more intense. Um, so that's pretty well where the name came mm-hmm. from. Okay, well, it's good. It all sounds really good. And are these um, tunes that are coming up on a new album or? Yep, yep. Okay. What well, down now on um, on on um, get it from Bandcamp. Yeah, I'll put it up on there. Twenty four tracks. Okay, great. That's great. Well, um, I know that uh, your your music is worth listening to. I like to listen to it a lot and. Uh, so one of the things, I mean, you know, I, I write lyrics and I love uh, lyrics, but when I'm at work or I'm working on something I have to read or write, then I love listening to music without lyrics. And so your music is great for that. Anyway, we better wrap it up, Eric. It's been so great to talk to you. And to you and, guys too. Um, if it's okay, I'd like to say a prayer for you. Okay, all right. Father God, in Jesus' name, I thank you so much for this time. I thank you for Eric and for his um, wonderful spirit and his love, his tolerance, his acceptance of people. And, I mean, he loves people. And I thank you, Lord, that uh, he sets out a good example. I ask you, Father, to bless him, bless his music, uh, to touch others and help people to realize and, and to feel that we need to get along. Um, I pray, Father, for his safety, his health, for the safety and health of his family, for all of us, all of our family, friends, and loved ones, and everybody who watches and listens. I thank you, God, for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Eric. Thanks, guys. We appreciate your listening to Treasure Vessels of the Living Word. You can find us and make comments on the audio tracks at our website, treasure-vessels.com. We hope you come back soon for our next podcast. Until then, God bless and thank you for listening.